Hello everyone and welcome to the inaugural video of Hedgehog Month here on Coach Max Entertainment. This is the first video of this brand new celebration that's going to be happening every July and today we're just going to be taking a relaxed look at my personal history with Sonic. Now if you're not sure what Hedgehog Month is, you can check out the video that I posted yesterday. I feel like it's kind of self-explanatory. Every July, what we will be doing is just taking a look at different Sonic-related things on the channel. It's not that I will only post Sonic videos during July, but this gives me a set time period during the year, uh, especially since I'm a school teacher. Uh, in the summertime, I have a whole lot more time to work on things, especially these types of videos. And so hopefully the quality just overall will be a whole lot better. Today though, like I said, we're going to be taking a very relaxed look at my personal history with the Sonic franchise. The three franchises that were the most foundational in my life have been Crash Bandicoot, Pokemon, and Sonic. Uh, although Sonic just hasn't found a way onto the channel in any form, and I don't really know why that's happened. Pokemon took over because of Pokemon challenges, Crash Bandicoot because it was around the time of CTR Nitro Fuel, but Sonic just, nothing's really happened and I want to make sure that I fix that. To start us out, we're going to go all the way back to 1996, whenever I first played Sonic 2. Now, I was born in 1994, so I was two years old at the time. My dad had a Genesis, and this game, and the newly released Toy Story video game, I'm assuming is around that time. Listen, the dates aren't super specific here. We were just going to kind of guesstimate, but this game, I devoured this game. Uh, mainly because I could kind of just hold right, I think. Uh, but then I started to actually realize it, you know, growing up uh, a few years later, around three or four. And then the other thing that turned Sonic on to me was the TV show, The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. And this was on Toon Disney, which does not exist anymore. I would spend countless hours watching The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. We had different VHS tapes of it. What we would do is get those blank VHS tapes and record over them uh, on TV. That way we had all of the commercials that were in between it. Uh, I guess saying this now, a lot of kids these days don't even realize what that is. So I guess I'm a boomer. I was born in 94, like I said, so not really a boomer. Mm, great, now I feel old. But Sonic 2, this is where it all started. I don't know what it was, but seeing Sonic and Tails and, I mean, Robotnik right here, just, oh, so good. And then on the backside, Sonic and Tails team up. There's so much to love about this, especially my favorite part. Uh, don't know where the game is. Uh, it's a shame that this kind of game hasn't been released on 50, 100 consoles. Yeah, shame that hasn't happened. And I didn't really know anything about the other Sonic animated series, uh, Sad AM, if you are one of the people that actually understands what that means. Uh, I have a few VHS tapes of it, but I was never into that show, and I'm kind of glad. It's a much more serious take on the show. Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog was definitely slapstick humor. But from that point, uh, I got my dad to buy Sonic the Hedgehog, the first one on the Genesis, on eBay, and I kind of tore the cover up. I feel like it actually tore on its own because it's a very clean rip. Uh, I have the game in this one, but this is not my favorite Sonic game at all. It's honestly probably not even in the top 10. And then I got Sonic 3 D Blast. Uh, I have very weird memories with this game. Sonic 3 didn't come for much, much later for me. But with Sonic 3D Blast, I remember us going to a Kroger, which if you're not from Tennessee, that is a family grocery store. There was a video rental section where you could get VHSs and games, and I rented Sonic 3D Blast and Tiny Toons Halloween Special, whatever its actual name was. Uh, and I remember getting home, playing Sonic 3D Blast. If you've ever played it, you know what I'm about to say. It is difficult, especially at a very young age. And I gave up on this, popped in Tiny Toons, and there you go. It's, it's just poetry. And then the other Sonic Genesis game that I have such fond memories with is Sonic and Knuckles with its lock-on technology. Uh, I'm not really sure what I did with the little sticker right here. Uh, it's, I wasn't, I didn't take good care of my games when I was younger. Uh, a lot of my PlayStation 1 games are scratched up real bad. That's not related to Sonic, though. I got this game whenever we went to a Chattanooga Lookouts baseball game. 
and I don't know why I picked this one. I guess because I liked that it was black and had the Sonic and Knuckles logo. Uh, it has Knuckles in the game, I didn't know if you knew that. But these were the games that just shaped so many things in my life. The only one I never really got to own uh, was Sonic CD. I played that one later, but I don't have an actual copy of it. I have it on Jim's collection and the uh, digital versions of it, but I don't have a physical copy of it. I remember going to a store called Sam Goody, which was just an electronics store, and they had a big old bin of computer games. And in that was Sonic CD for the Sega PC. Now that wasn't an actual console, it was just what branding they had on their games that were on the PC at the time. And we didn't have a PC, so I wasn't able to get it. But I remember seeing Sonic and then a robot looking Sonic, and I thought, well that's really cool, and never looked at it again until the Gems Collection. In the time, after that, I started slowly adding more and more to my Sonic knowledge. Uh, I got my dad to order Sonic Spinball, which is not that fun, but I love having my own copy of this game, and not just the digital version, and a game that I've never heard anyone ever speak of before. This is called Bubble and Squeak, and to my young brain, I saw a blue dude with peach-colored uh, face and belly and white and black eyes. And I thought, this is some distant relative to Sonic. Seriously though, if you've ever played this game, or have ever heard anything about it, let me know. Uh, it's weird. I finally picked up Sonic 3. It wasn't until around like 2004, 2005-ish. I'd already played it on the Sonic Gems collection, but I still wanted my own. And it's part of the Mega Hit series. Um, I guess I need to find a copy of it that's not from this to be a purist. Uh, I guess getting complete in box would be the best, but I'm a school teacher, I don't have that kind of money. And so until around kindergarten, first grade time period, my experience with Sonic was very much just on the Genesis and on the TV on the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, that was whenever Sonic Adventure came out. Now, I did not own a Sega Dreamcast until around 2007, uh, and obviously I didn't pick this up until around that time, it didn't just sit around my house. But this was the game that absolutely made me a Sonic nut. Sonic 2 just ramped up my love for it as a child. This made it as a slightly bigger child. I remember going to a store called Big Lots and they had these little posable action figures of Sonic and uh, there was Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Pink Girl who I thought was Knuckles' girlfriend or something or like Knuckles' version of Tails. I didn't understand. I didn't know who Amy was. And there was the weird, lanky Robotnik, who, Eggman, obviously, and Big the Cat. If I had known that Big the Cat would be the meme that he is at that time, I just don't know what my little brain would have done. Probably asked what a meme was. And I remember going to Sears and playing Sonic Adventure on their little kiosk setup, just the Sonic part, playing through the Chaos Zero battle, Emerald Coast, and then the battle with Eggman in the Mystic Ruins. And then that was as far as we could get because we had to leave the store. But that game, oh my goodness, this is what made Sonic so cool to me. This is what did it right here. And I'm not sure why I never picked up a Dreamcast. I guess my parents just didn't want me to get one, I don't know. But Sonic was basically nothing new going on after that. Uh, watching reruns of The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, playing it on the Genesis, but I had uh, turned on to the PlayStation and PlayStation 2 at this point. There wasn't anything Sonic related. But then I got the GameCube and I was able to play Sonic Adventure DX in its glory. And oh my goodness, this game. Oh, and it's one of those without the, uh, you know, mega hits collection or whatever. I've got it right here, player's choice. We'll get to this one in a second. And I just, this game, this is the one that I played as a child the day my GameCube came home, uh, played it without a memory card so I'd play as far into it as I could get. Uh, even when I got a memory card, I got all the way to the end of the game, but I couldn't do anything uh, playing as Big the Cat because I didn't know how to do the fishing. And it wasn't until many years later that I actually figured out how to do that and saw the actual ending of this game. And then, Mega Collection was very important for a very different reason. In Mega Collection, I was able to play Sonic 3 for the first time, which was mind-blowing. But, the more mind-blowing part was the comic collection. I had no idea that there was a Sonic the Hedgehog comic book, 
And looking through all of the covers of this series, I just thought I have to get my hands on some of these. And get my hands on some of them I did. I started out with these five uh, comics right here. Uh, each of them were very unique to me at the time, reading something about Sonic. This is actually a very important uh, issue right here. Uh, on two of these, you can see staples holding the comics together. I guess I didn't take good care of them. I didn't know what these plastic sleeves were for at the time. But these five issues started a monstrous addiction that I'm not proud of it. This box. It's, uh, it's full of Sonic comics. This was around 2004. I was getting more and more into Sonic than I already was. The comics were just growing the love inside of me, especially whenever I was able to go to a comic store in Cookville, Tennessee, and get the newest issue each month. I started around issue number 130 and kept going with it all the way up to like 230. That was whenever I went to college, and unfortunately, I just wasn't able to keep up with the series since then. There is the new IDW comics, which I haven't read any of. I've heard really good things about, but we're still in 2004, 2005. Not the present. Now with the GameCube in my collection, I was able to play more Sonic games. I finally, finally got to play the game with Shadow. And look, you're a preteen kid, you look at Shadow, you cannot think that he is the coolest thing ever. Uh, Shadow the Hedgehog though, not the coolest thing ever. I actually rented this game from Blockbuster and uh, we took it back because it had uh, language in it. And as a young child, having anything with a game that had bad language in it. I thought I was a bad person. Um, then came Sonic Heroes and Sonic Mega Collection, and Sonic Heroes is not a great game at all. It's very clunky, but man, I had so much fun with this game. I don't know why the PS2 version is the one that I have. I've heard that it's the one that's definitely the buggiest. Um, probably the PC version, actually but it's just the one that I got. And Mega Collection Plus was really fun because it came with all of the Game Gear games as well as the other Sonic games on it. So that was a nice thing. And this had some of the comic book covers up to the point where I was with the comic series now. So it was really cool seeing the newest issue in my hand and seeing it on TV in the comics collection. Just really, really cool things like that shaped my childhood. And, like I mentioned earlier, the Sonic Gems Collection finally let me play Sonic CD. It let me play a great version of Sonic R. I actually had Sonic R for the Sega PC, and my PC, whenever we finally got one, it was not very good. Uh, I'm pretty sure I downloaded like 50 viruses on it. We had to just destroy it at a certain point. Uh, and I got to play Sonic the Fighters. I guess that's all Sonic Gems Collection is good for. And then there was Sonic Riders the very first game that I ever pre-ordered. And I don't mean we went to GameStop and put $5 down to pre-order it. What we did was we ordered it online, delivered it to our house. And this was when my parents were terrified about giving personal information on the internet. The only reason we used eBay was because my dad could use PayPal where we went to the bank and did something with money or something. I don't really know, I'm not a money person. But we ordered it, and it came with a Sonic shirt. An extra large shirt with the art style from Sonic Riders. Not this CG version, but the one that the logo is made out of. And I thought that it was the coolest thing ever. Now, I am a small person now. I was very tiny back then. This was around 2005. And, oh, what a game. Just, just what a game. What a shirt. I tried to find a picture of it. I don't think I have any of it. Uh, it would still swallow me whole. Just so many, so many good memories with this one. Uh, the sequel I never played, uh, well that's a lie. I played it a little bit, then got rid of it. And the one on the Kinect, it doesn't exist. We all know that. I haven't even mentioned the Sonic Advance Trilogy and Sonic Battle. Going on at the exact time as all those games, I was playing these on the go. I think Sonic Battle is the absolute best Sonic handheld game ever. Better than Rush, better than Rush Adventure, which I haven't played, so that's probably it. Better than Brotherhood. Uh, that was a good RPG, but that goes into the DS era, and that's still going way further. Sonic Battle was just, mm, so good. If you've never played it, you need to play it. It has the best art style of anything I've ever seen before. So I was able to watch Sonic on TV. I was able to play it at home. I was able to play it on the go. I was able to read Sonic. 
life was great as a Sonic fan at the time. And that was before I even really got into the internet. The only website that I knew of was called Sonic Central, and I would just devour it all day long. And it gave basic information on the video games. And then there was one game that they started to advertise. This one right here. Oh, what a game. What a game. You know, I really wanted to do a bit where I uh, grab this and like break the disc, but uh, I, I, I can't do that to Sonic. If I had an extra one, I would, but I don't just have, you know, money lying around to go buy games to break. But unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your view of Sonic 06, I didn't have a PS3 or an Xbox 360 at the time. Now we're in 2006, 2007, it was right before the Wii came out, and when the Wii came out, I got Sonic in the Secret Rings, but it wasn't very fun. My interest in Sonic was kind of fading. There weren't any brand new things going on that I was able to experience, and those that I did, I just didn't love. Until October 10th, when Super Smash Bros. Brawl announced on the website called The Dojo that Sonic was going to be in Brawl. Also, I have two copies of Brawl because one of them, the disc, is broken, and I don't really know what happened to it. It's very, very sad, but I still kept the case because, I mean, how do you... This is the best Smash Brothers. Anyways, it was a day that we had snow, or maybe it was during fall break or something. Fall break actually makes more sense if it was October 10th. But I remember loading up the dojo, seeing the new announcement that a challenger was approaching, and it was Sonic the Hedgehog. My mind was blown. I had always wanted to play as Sonic in Smash Brothers. I always wanted to beat up Mario, and just... Oh... Life was good for that small portion of time as a Sonic fan. Sonic 06, I didn't get to experience it. I didn't even know that it was a bad game at the time. Sonic and the Secret Rings, I thought I just wasn't good at it. I was able to have so much fun because of this through Sonic. And even though my interest in the games was fading outside of Smash Brothers, the comics kept me going. There's this one, where you have the Sonic Battle art style, and you have Sonic, Metal Sonic, and Shadow on the cover. How cool is that? Then you move on to this, Scourge. Scourge was Evil Sonic, who got a color change, and how do you not love this? I don't think I was an angsty teenager, but you read back through these comics and you get angsty teenage vibes. Then you see ones like this where it says Sonic vs. Tails, Friends No More. I believe that they were mortal enemies from that point forward. And then of course you have milestone issues like Sonic 200. These stories kept me going for so long when nothing in the video games department was keeping me in. This was the absolute best. In that time period, I found a webcomic called Two Piece Start, and they had a podcast also, very fun to go back and listen to. It's weird listening to them talk about the Wii as it was released, talking about how people were saying, well, Nintendo's just not hardcore, and you still hear stuff about that. But this isn't about Nintendo, this is about Sonic. And one of the guys, Ray, that was uh, the illustrator for the comic, was a huge Sonic fan. So listening to him talk about Sonic felt like I was connecting to someone else talking about Sonic. It was such a fun experience. Unfortunately, the comic ended in 2010, and they did podcasts for like two or three more years after that. Um, if anyone on here has ever seen 2P Start, please, please let me know, because I adored that comic. And around the time of its ending, Sonic Generations came out. I had skipped over Unleashed. I had skipped over Colors. Even whenever I got a 360 and played Sonic 06, I just wasn't into it. But then, my senior year of high school, Sonic Generations comes out, and it is the absolute best Sonic game. It's basically your greatest hits version. You have classic and modern Sonic all mixed into one, and there's so many great things going on here. I actually have every achievement in this game, except for one. So whenever I was a freshman in college, my roommate, who was one of my best friends, uh, he was playing through Sonic 06, Sonic 06, this is Generations, and he was like, hey, this game's really fun. And I was like, you know what, that one was fun. And I picked it up again, got all the achievements, except one. That is almost impossible, and I'm afraid it's gonna haunt me until I die. It's just how it is. And then, 
the worst thing happened. I just stopped caring about Sonic. But it wasn't without being provoked. I remember so vividly going to a GameStop with my friends, playing the Sonic Lost World demo, and I legitimately don't think I've ever been that disappointed in my life. Uh, my friend tells me that he thought that I was going to cry in that store, and I felt like it. I had never had that much no fun with anything ever before. I haven't touched anything Sonic Lost World related since then. Maybe I'm missing out on something because they keep bringing back Zax or whatever that guy's name is, but just left a really bad taste in my mouth. And then I never even picked up Sonic Boom and I heard all about it. I watched the Game Grump series on it, but never played it. I never played its DS version or the DS sequel. I never played anything related to that. I didn't watch Sonic Boom the TV show. I've seen clips of it, but I just stopped caring about Sonic. I was growing up, and Sonic wasn't growing up in the way that I wanted it to. I just lost interest in everything. And then Sonic Mania came out. I was, you know, keeping up with Sonic, just kind of looking from afar, and I thought that that was a great idea. Of course, having Christian Whitehead on the project is just, that's a no-brainer. That's gonna work out no, no, no matter what. But I never picked up the game. I don't know why that happened. It wasn't until it was on sale on the PlayStation Network that I finally downloaded it, and when I first played it, I did not like it at all. I had heard so many great things about how this is Sonic's return to form, it's so good, and I just didn't like it. Now, of course, when you play through Chemical Plant Zone, yes, there's changes to it, but it's basically the same. Almost the same for Green Hill. I just didn't understand. Why was everyone loving Sonic and I wasn't? It wasn't until a few weeks later, I picked the game back up again, and something happened. I started really enjoying it. Mania was finally fun, and I feel like I had set up so many impossible barriers for the game to jump over, and it finally hit them. Sonic was back in my life, and I was enjoying it. I was thinking of all these fond memories that I've just talked about, and I feel like I've barely even scratched the surface with so many of these memories. Sonic came back. And then Sonic Forces came out. And it's not bad, it's just, it's just not that good. But now, Sonic is in its 30th anniversary. This little blue guy has been everywhere along the way with me. Even whenever it kind of faded out, Sonic was always there in the background. Always just kind of hanging out. And I can't believe it's the 30th anniversary. We just had the awesome Symphony Orchestra event happen, and Sonic Colors is getting its remaster in a few months, so now is a great time to be a Sonic fan. In fact, if you can get any of this Sonic stuff, it's a great time to be a Sonic fan. I looked back through these comics that brought me so much joy. I would lay in bed at night and fall asleep with comics in my hand, reading them. Oh, so many memories. Sonic wasn't always the thing that took the most priority for me, but it's the game series that I loved the most. And that's just all I'm trying to do with Hedgehog Month. I hope you've enjoyed this rant of me just talking about my childhood. I realize the market on that is very, very small, but just know that this was pretty personal. And I've loved being able to share these stories with y'all. I have so many more Sonic stories that I can share, and so if you want more like this, just, just let me know. Maybe you can think of it as some sort of podcast or something. Make sure that you like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, that way you stay updated, and don't forget, we're celebrating Hedgehog Month all month, this July. Until next time, see you later!